Hello, my name is Rod Coburn, District Governor of Rotary District 5230, and I'm delighted to be your host of this episode of our monthly show, Adventures in Service. We will inform you about Rotary, and we will talk to you about what Rotary does in the community and throughout the world. We're also going to learn how our adventures have changed people's lives, as well as our own. We really appreciate positive feedback and encourage comments about this program. We hope that you will all enjoy today's episode. So let's start. Hi, my name is Oriana Gropetti and I'm with Visalia County Center Rotary. And here's this month's news. The one and only Cultural Arts Club, Cultural Arts Rotary Club of Fresno, California, succeeded to raise $2,662.04 for the pennies for polio campaign. The club won the contest for gathering the most pennies out of 54 clubs in our district that all together raised $91,968.75. They also won the creative component of the pennies for polio campaign as they did an opera Puccini for polio and carved a giant four-foot wooden Lincoln penny with the colors of the polio cause ribbon and wheeled it to their functions and meetings. They also baked penny cookies and designed and created their own milk cartons to sell them for fundraising. The club would like to give a special thanks to Rotarian and Pennies for Polio Chair, Janice Noga, whose enthusiasm was contagious, and to everyone who helped make that campaign thrive. Clovis Rotary Club participated in HGTV's TV show Extreme Makeover Home Edition from July 30th to August 4th in Clovis, California. One week, one goal, one family's dream come true. Nick Reeder, a firefighter and hero in the community, was told that the community has his back on this one. After six days of round-the-clock construction in the Central Valley heat, the extreme team and community volunteers were proud to have completed the mission. Clovis Rotary was there in full force, donating $1,000 to the project, over 50 hours of manpower to the event. Clovis Rotarians Kevin Peters, Leticia Ramirez, and Mike Guido got down and dirty throughout the week to help ensure that the home was ready for the moment the Reeder family yelled, move that bus. The last piece of news for today is about Monterey County. Every single eighth grader in Monterey County is about to get an opportunity of a lifetime. A free ticket to see Hamilton, the Tony Award winning hit play at the Orpheum Theater in San Francisco. The endeavor is made possible by Monterey based Dan and Lillian King Foundation, which was formed in 2011. Stephen Collins, executive director of the King Foundation says, the focus of our foundation is simple and direct, the kids. Mark Del Piero, King Foundation board member, is the visionary behind it all. Although this is not a Rotary project, but all those behind it are Rotarians, who are people of action through many venues. And that was the news. Now back to you, Rod. Well, we're back on uh, avenues of service, adventures in service that Rotary are involved in. And it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Lee Brand to uh, this program today, this episode. Uh, Lee is the mayor of Fresno. Uh, Lee was also a member of Fig Garden Rotary Club until they got too busy downtown to make it out to the north end of town. And uh, Lee was, uh, the year that I was president of my club, I think you got the, uh, uh, one of the major awards for Paul the Harris. club. And Paul Harris, mm -hmm. and also uh, was my program chairman. So Lee, right. again, thank you for all the things that you've <laughs> you've done for Rotary. Uh, we need to talk about a new uh, initiative that uh, you have, uh, are leading to uh, keep Fresno beautiful. Right. Tell me what led to uh, the uh, formation of this project. Well, forever, you know, Fresno's had, a, in a lot of cities, have a problem with uh, litter and trash. And I think if you go back to my early days on the council back in 2009, 2010, this was an issue, but back then it was, I think it was different. It was people like going down Highway 41, stuff flying off the back of trucks, and it's really changed in the last e couple of years, primarily due to homelessness, and a lot of the homeless encampments around uh, the different highways. And the uh, you know the event we had about a m about a month ago about Caltrans and their responsibility to keep the uh, freeways clean. And that actually started about I started this. Two years ago, I started mm. meeting with uh, this Keep America Beautiful organization, and we worked with Bakersfield, California, who's had a very successful program. 
uh, to get ideas going on how to fund these. And it, so we met with Caltrans, and there's been all this expansion in the last 20 years, 168, 180. As they expanded the freeways, they didn't think about the maintenance part of it. So mm -hmm. they literally have like one person per like 55 acres. And so they, were put, they have a budget of very little. They need at least a million dollars a year to maintain the freeways. And the freeways you know, in, within the city limits, 41, 99, 180, 168, are the responsibility of the state of California. And so we finally worked a, a, a deal where the, uh, the Caltrans put in $200,000. We got Major C in the city. So we got $400,000, probably for 400000 for two years. And that gets us a start, but realistically, we need at least a million dollars to uh, properly fund. So some of the council members were uh, concerned and angry, and I don't blame them. I was angry too. But there's a, you know, a proper way to do this, you know, civil way to do this. And so we met with Caltrans. And what needed to be done is to work with the governor and the state legislature to properly fund our freeway system and the maintenance of our freeway. And if you remember, when I, I've been here forever, and you have too, wrong, <laughs> too yeah. long. Well, not that forever, when 40, but close. When 41 was first built back about 19, early 80s, this went up from downtown to, to Bullard. And for, it eventually extended on to Herndon and, of course, across the river. But at, at first, there was no landscaping on Highway right. 41. Now, at the time, oh, my God, how ugly does this look? And then we look at it now, maybe that was not the right thing to do. <laughs> but Clovis and their portion of like 168, if you look at their kind of a, a zero-scape type of landscaping, they were smarter. And so what happens in, in, when you have big trees and a lot of foliage, it's an attractive place for homeless people. And so that we kind of made our, you know, we made the wrong decision. It's kind of too late to, to, to make amends for it right now. But as we go forward, we need to start making some changes. And the other problem on the homeless population in Fresno, so if you clear a lot of the people out of the homeless areas along for all the highways, where are they gonna go? They're just gonna go into Fresno's parks, neighborhoods, shopping centers. So this program in many ways embraces the broader problem of homelessness. And we were fortunate to the, the, the big 11 mayors to lobby then Governor Brown a year ago, and this year Governor Newsom, to fund all the cities and counties. And so we got what they call HEAP funds, $3.1 million. Uh, the county through the continuum of care got about nine and a half, ten million dollars $10 And now the money's being rolled out into contracts with the Poverty House and, uh, and uh, different agencies out there. We have about 137 beds that the city's gonna have. And the goal is to get people off the street. And the key to anything you're doing, I know we're getting off the, the keep Fresno clean, but it, it, I'll tie it all together. But when you have a homeless population, you have to have a, an exit strategy. Simply warehousing people in it, whether it's a tent structure, it's a formal building like, like a rescue mission, you have to get people connected to clinical services, and case mm -hmm. management. So if it's mental health, you've got to get them hooked up. Drug abuse, substance abuse, and you've got to separate the facilities. You can't have a, a single mother, like in a de domestic abuse with two children, living next door to or sleeping next door to two drug addicts. You gotta, right. So we're working on that. We've got money segregated. But solving that problem will go to a, long extent, a large extent to solving the, the problem of keeping our, our, our city clean. And so the only way it's going to work has got to be through a volunteer effort. And the secret has got to be, can you develop a sustainable solution? In other words, there's the Mormon church for many years, they go once a year, they clean up Woodward Park. Well, that's great, but you know, 30 days later, what it's going to look like. So you have to have tap into this. And I think this community, what I've learned as mayor, it's a lot of big hearts, a lot of people that are really love this community. They want what's best for the community. So my job is to tap into that resource through service clubs who are naturally going to be there. And through, I have a faith-based council that has literally about 120 church members from all denominations and probably represents thousands of par par parishioners to get, say, certain churches assigned to certain streets, to certain uh, uh, parks, to get rotary clubs, service clubs, and working with existing, not, there's like Clean Fresno, some other organizations out there already that are doing this. So it's, I'm working with Mark Standard from my staff, you know right. Mark, to organize <coughs> These, these groups, we have to get a, a 501C with the, uh, the, the connected to the, um, uh, the national organization. And we're still working with, uh, with Bakersfield with a goal with the next three or four months to roll out this effort with a continued effort to really 
at the highways, the median islands, um, the, uh, the parks, shopping centers, and then in, in employ private sector, nonprofits, and government. And the Fresno would contribute to with like our sanitation department. So one of the things I, w I met with Clean Fresno recently is they need support services. So you're going to go out and take a section of a highway. They'd have these trucks or vans when they have like you know the baskets, the, right. you know, the, the water, you got to have your potty breaks. It's got to be organized and, lo and the logistics have got to be considered. So we're trying to put all this together and it takes money. So we're going to look for donations in the community and other types of ways to, to get this thing going. But I think it's a good effort for the city of Fresno because when somebody comes in like from, from um, the airport, the first image they get going down, say, McKinley Avenue, mm -hmm. heading towards a hotel or wherever they're going is going to be, you see the homeless encampment, you see trash scattered along the highway. We've got to do a better job. And we're trying to, one of my primary goals, my top of my list is economic development, job creation, to change the narrative of Fresno right. from this you know, chronic unemployment, high crime, poor academic performance, and, make, and, and generational poverty to change that. And having a job and an education are the only two ways you can really make a significant difference. So it all ties in. So when you're talking about uh, philanthropic organizations, nonprofits, such as Rotary, right. um, what I heard you say was something about funding and then also about providing services, about uh, boots on the ground, right. hands in the gutter, and those kinds of things. Did I hear that, that there are really two pieces to that? There's, yeah, there's several pieces. Another thing is actually, I've got Bob Nelson from President Unified, working with Clovis Unified, Central Unified. There's schools that want to engage, where they get a school people, if they get extra credit, get 10 or 20, say, high school students. They're assigned a certain area of town. I think if you can get it where there's, you got a territory. Your, your job is to keep this street clean, this park clean. It may work better, but I'm just speculating. But it's going to be an assortment of, again, nonprofits, profits, uh, foundation, look for foundation money, uh, uh, government, putting all these resources, faith-based, putting all these resources together on a sustained basis. So we just don't lose steam like so many things you do, right. unfortunately, in, in government. Well, you know, you <clears throat> in Rotary, we have a lot of activities with high school kids mm -hmm. and through our Interact Clubs. And we've got, uh, I don't know, can't remember the number right now, but we have close to a dozen Interact Clubs in the Fresno area, and, and they are looking for service projects too. So this might be a way that we can uh, not only have Rotarians involved, but also to have our, our younger folks that we are in fact mentoring in, right. in some fashion. And one of the goals internationally uh, this year for our international president is to have uh, organizations work together so that Rotary and the Kiwanis Club mm -hmm. or Elks or whomever can uh, lever their infrastructure, lever their processes together to be able to sit work with something like this in the right. city of Fresno. So what I hear is that uh, this is a uh, uh, not just a uh, project to be done in the next six months, but this is going to be an ongoing, uh, hopefully forever, project of keeping Fresno more beautiful. Yeah, the initial step is to develop the infrastructure, to get the organization, the logistics and the support, and then execute a plan and to keep this a sustained uh, level of service. And like public service announcement, to remind people, this is your city, take care of it, take pride in it. You're walking down, you see a, a wrapper down there, pick it up and throw it away. Uh, part of the deal too, when you go to like uh, in homeless encampments too, you have things with safety concerns like needles. So those would be more people trained and more specialized in having the, the gloves and the proper, you know, equipment to not put themselves at uh, in harm's way. So also as part of this is that the services from the city of Fresno through the sanitation department would be there to help collect the refuse, to provide the the grabbers to be able to pick stuff up and and mm -hmm. to be able to augment the um, uh, the nonprofit or the agency which is trying to help the right. city. You get like a, like a big weekend planned. You've got all the organizations after mapped out certain areas of town. We try to get our sanitation department to be there as a backup as they pick up all. If you, I went down 41 today and you can see areas where there's they're bagged up. Mm -hmm. So they're halfway done. So uh, there's a timeline between you know how long those bags stay there and how long do you, does it take somebody to come by behind them and pick them up. Right. So there's a lot of 
moving parts here to make it work right. It's, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard to do it. And the, and the, the, the biggest challenge probably still going to be working with the homeless population. And for us, aside from Key Fresno Beautiful, you know, moral as well as, you know, imp imperative to find a, a way to put a dent in the problem that's uh, basically, a, you know, an epidemic up and down the state of California. But I've always been the optimist. The, the glass is always half full. And in talking about the homeless situation as it ties into the beautification and, and having homeless uh, population be reduced is to be able to identify what the root cause of that homelessness mm -hmm. is. So I understand that the city then is, is dealing with that and putting a plan in place to be able to handle the three or four different Well, the issues. state of California, like every year I go to the Conference of Mayors in Washington, D.C., and one of the meetings we have during my time there is this, the big, it's called the Big 11, now it's the Big 13, the 13 biggest cities in California. We have a meeting, and at the first one I did in, in 2017, we talked about the problems, we all, and the co most common, consistent problem was homelessness. So we all made a pact to d then lobby again Governor Brown. We've since lobbied Governor Newsom with a little bit more money. But in my opinion, the, the leading causes of homelessness are the opioid uh, uh, crisis that's, right. I saw a deal in 60 Minutes last night, I can see the photo, one doctor had like 100,000 prescriptions. It's gone totally out of control, it's affecting a whole generation of people, and it cuts across black, white, rich, poor, there's no, yes. there's indiscriminate killer. Mental health, and I, in my old life, years ago, I was a mental health administrator, Kingsley Corporation for four years, and I remember when when they when they they closed the state hospital system down, I think it was like 78, 79, all these homeless people, the mental patients, inpatients came out in the streets, went to Madera, Fresno, everywhere. Most of the families didn't want them. That was kind of the inception, you know, of, of homelessness. And as the Vietnam War and the the the, the war in Afghanistan and I in Iraq brought more people with PTS and, and those kind of things, it just sort of fed each other. Then I think the last maybe two or three or four years, the, the fuel that lit the fire up was opioid addiction, mental health, and the third, probably the third element would be homelessness and the, this rapid escalation of prices in, in California, right. particularly in, in the Bay Area where you have you know, rents at three or $4,000 on the bottom end. I was in Palo Alto on a meeting in um, January, early this year, and we're talking, it's called Valley to Valley Connection. It's myself and, and Ashley Swearinger, my former mayor, and other people from Fresno, selling Silicon Valley people to connect to Fresno for, for jobs and economic growth. And one of my major pitches was that, in, you, I'm looking around me, we're in Palo Alto where the, say the median price of a home is $2 million. Right. I'm looking at the bartender and the, how are you gonna afford to, uh, but they're, they're, they're driving one, two, three hours to get there. Right. That's dysfunctional. As you come to Fresno, you can locate your business and you'll have a, your employees driving within 20 minutes. And so there's, all kinds of issues related to this. And, you know, it's not gonna be easy to solve any of these problems, but uh, as long as I'm here, I'll do whatever effort and use my God-given talents and abilities to, at least in this city, this, this small part of, Fres of the state of California, to improve the, the pro quality of life, because it's a quality of life issue for all of us. Well, I agree with you, Lee, and uh, Rotary is having Mark Standriff, or at least the presidents mm -hmm. in the Fresno area, uh, uh, come to a meeting of all of the Rotary presidents to see how we can interface with the program that you're putting together because mm -hmm. that's uh, Rotary connects the world but it's got to start in your own community right here right so I thank you for sh coming in and sharing some time with us and and sharing your thoughts about what's going on and how uh, nonprofits and uh, organizations like Rotary can assist you in making this a much better community. So one person thank at you. a time. Thank Thanks. you for inviting me. Thanks, you. my friend. Good to see you again. Likewise. Good evening. My name is Vanita Jordan, and I'm a member of Visalia County Center Rotary. And here are the upcoming events for this month. Our first event for today is held by the Visalia Latina Rotary Club. We would love to join them for their inaugural black and white ball, benefiting the Open Arms House. This event will take place on Saturday, September 7th, 2019, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. 
at the Lamplighter Inn in Visalia. For tickets, visit www.visaliarotaryevents.org or for more information, contact BW at visaliarotaryevents.org. Next, we have Shenzhen Stroll Champagne Brunch inside the Shenzhen Friendship Garden in Fresno. The event is held by the Cultural Arts Rotary Club of Fresno and is benefiting the garden educational and youth cultural arts programs. It will be held on Sunday, October 13th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Ticket purchases include a complimentary glass of champagne. There are also savory and sweet brunch items with orange juice, coffee, and tea as well as music, arts, silent auction, and cultural performance. Please visit shenzhenstroll.bpt.me for tickets and information. The third event is held by Selma Rotary Club that celebrates 55 years hosting Selma Rotary Band Festival. They are excited to offer $9,000 in cash prizes again this year as a way of saying thank you for your continued support of our event. The event will be held on October 26 in Staley Stadium in Selma, and the parade will be broadcast live on My Central Valley KAIL. For tickets and more information, please visit www.selmabandfestival.net or contact Shar Tucker at Shar Home Loans at sbcglobal.net. Our final event for this evening is the first annual Margarita Tasting and Silent Auction Dinner by Foothill Rotary Club. There will be music by Lindsay High School Guitar Ensemble as well as special performance by Ballet Folklorical Sierra Linda. The event will be held on Saturday, September 14th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Lindsay Wellness Center located at 860 North Sequoia in Lindsay. For more information or tickets, contact foothillrotary at gmail.com. That was our event list for this month. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening. Back to you, Rod. Well, thank you for joining us today on this episode of Adventures in Service. We hope that you will join us next month for another Adventures in Service program where we can highlight what Rotary does locally and throughout the world because Rotary are people of service, people of action.